Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So recently I was contacted by Arthur Dark of the Hollywood Graveyard Channel here on YouTube. He's working on a film project and needed a bit of an assist on building a prop for it. So in this video I'm going to be tackling just that. Building a replica of the coffin from 1922's Nosferatu. So let's get to it. After cutting my materials down to their final size, I could get right into assembling the box that would become the base of the coffin, starting with creating the sides of the coffin frame. I'll be building this with half-inch plywood and 1x3s just to ensure that it can withstand whatever the production may do with it, and that all starts with a bit of wood glue. Each piece of the frame will get glued and clamped in place. Then I can flip over the panel and secure it with some 1-inch screws. Building any large-scale prop with the ability to be broken down for storage is almost always a good idea. It's also a great way to flex your creative muscles to come up with a solution that works best for your individual situation. Once the sides are assembled, I can shift my attention to the front and back panels. To make transporting the coffin easier, they ask that it be able to be disassembled. So before I build the front and back, I'll need to measure the thickness of the side panels so that I can offset the framing to allow them to be joined with a minimal seam line. And after I take my measurement, I can mark off my plywood, scribe a guideline, and then get to gluing everything in place. I like to use a plastic scraper to apply glue since it's easier than using a brush and cleans up a lot faster as well. That way I can get even coverage and a solid bond between my materials. A few screws to keep everything in place and then I can add in some angle brackets. I'll be using an offcut to make sure the position is good, since the side panels are still a bit unruly. These angle brackets will allow for the crew to assemble and disassemble the frame to make for easy transport, and will provide rigidity to the box. And after a quick assembly of the box off camera, it's time to correct any alignment issues I may have by giving it a quick pass with my belt sander. I'll also use this opportunity to soften the edges of the boards, which should prevent them from tearing out or splintering if it gets dragged on the ground. Now comes the fun part, skinning the box with 1 inch XPS insulation foam. I've cut the foam into strips to help maximize the amount of foam I have, and will be adhering it to the box by wetting the surface with water and then applying some Gorilla Glue to the foam. The water here is really important since the glue is water activated. Then it's just a matter of positioning the foam and clamping it in place. Anywhere that there's an overlap or just too much foam, I'll use a hot knife to trim off the excess. You could use a variety of tools for this step. I just like using this hot wire foam factory tool because it's a lot less messy than a saw. As I'm adding the foam, I need to keep track of my edges since the box needs to be disassembled, and I want to try and hide the seam as good as possible. So I'm alternating my layers of foam, which should help to minimize or at least downplay the seam, all while making sure not to glue the sides to the front or back on accident. And for any areas where a clamp won't reach, I like to use a bit of painter's tape as insurance to help keep everything in alignment. I'll repeat these steps, wetting down the surfaces, applying glue, attaching it to the box, and clamping until I've built up the overall shape of the coffin. Then I'll remove any excess foam 
and clean up the edges with a small rasp and a palm sander as needed. It was at this point that I'd really reached my limit for working outdoors. The extreme heat had finally done me in. Hey, remember when uh, I was complaining about the rain and all the cold weather we were having? Well, now it looks like the off switch is broken on the sun and it's becoming impossible to work outside, especially considering I've got this, this big thing cooking, literally. Help. All complaining aside, the summer weather had really kicked into high gear and I had to shift my build times to early morning, which meant no power tools and being much quieter. But I was able to glue on the rest of the lower section, which will eventually be hand-shaped, and install the top trim. And that brings us up to date on this build. Back to you in the studio, Derek. Thanks, Derek. While I'd hoped to be finished in a week, the weather really just made it impossible to get anything done. But thankfully, there's supposed to be a break in the weather, and I'll be able to wrap this build up in next week's video. Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, go make something. Hey gang, welcome back to, uh, balls. So recently I was contacted by fellow creator, Arthur, uh, hell. He's working on a follow-up to the 1922 Dracula, blah, 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 a replica of the 1922 Nosferatu movie, Orlok's Coffin. Nope. Thanks, Derek. While I hope to have done, blah, blah, oh, come on. The weather really just made it impossible to complete, uh, blah, 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 blah. Thanks, Derek. While I'd hoped to be built, oh, <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. But thankfully, there's supposed to be a break in the weather next week, and I'll be able, oh, come on.